we've got here is failure to communicate. Well, that, folks, is true. Again, we don't need no civil war. I don't need a civil war. Yes, for I'm the one. The only, I'm the patriotic Hobo Tom. You still have a military patcher, too. That was my own Boy Scout belt clip. I'll put that away in its proper place. Lose the hat, because there is no civil war going on. Yes, again, just in case I am prepared. But yeah, welcome back. Um, I went to go see a movie, so check out Movie Theater. Hello, folks, for it is I, the one. The only, the very patriotic looking hobo Tom, and I'm off to get the patriotic movie. Let's see here. My ticket right here. We don't need no civil war. Yep, my terrible rendition of a classic song. I'm off to the movie theater, as you can tell. My illegal movie candy. Okay, my very legally bought movie ticket. It's a nice, if you see me squinting, it's because the sun's literally right in my eyes. Yep, I'm off to go see Civil War. I'll let you know how it turns out, or it should be your, might be your patriotic duty to watch this movie. I'll talk to you later. Bye. So here we are, folks. The most illustrious movie theater in all of Daytona Beach. The CMX Theater. Look into this parking lot for you. Oh, there's a bump. There is the sun. That's where I'll be. There is the Daytona One Plaza. Let's see a little of what's coming soon. So here we go. Let's see Nice theater. Well, a little more crowd than I thought it would be. Yep, always an, an always an interesting trip there. And let's see inside the movie theater. And the previews for upcoming movies. Ginger ale. Uh, get a ginger ale and nothing else. Are those dogs fresh? For the man yesterday. Give me one. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna register. What's that right there? Mm -mm. That's Skittles on the counter, Marcus. This ain't mine, Mike. Yes, it is. Mind your business with your carol thunder and that. Marcus, get in the car. He has a gun to my head. One. Of this earth. It's 
stop those wagons coming. Gus March Phillips, I have a mission I want you to lead. Thank you, Sergeant. What's the plan? To neutralize the German U-boats in the North Atlantic. We're losing the war. Hitler is not playing. Tells us you're quite a popular name in adult film and entertainment, is that correct? I'm curious, did you always want to be in that line of work? I always wanted to be famous. If you need to read off the sides we gave you, just go ahead, all right? I know the last. She turns to the camera and through her trauma, addresses the lens directly. I know this might sound crazy. I don't want to alarm you. Do you remember a TV show we used to watch together? It was called... The Pink of Eight? Yeah. Do you watch? So yeah, I went to go see Civil War. Um, I have my ticket. Well, you'll see my ticket in the video. That's okay. You know what? It was a different movie for me. I'm not saying it was bad. It's probably a good change. It's probably a good change of pace from all the goofy movies I've been watching recently. So, so here, let's let's get to the thing everyone wants to see. Let's take a look at some footage. Some are already calling it the greatest. <clears throat> some are already calling it the greatest victory in the history of mankind. Western forces of Texas and California have suffered a very great loss, a very great defeat at the hands of the fighting men and women of the United States military. The people of Texas and California should know that they will be welcomed back to these United States has failed in its attempt to force the brave people of the Carolinas into joining the insurrection. Citizens of America, we are now closer than ever to a historic victory. As we eliminate the final pockets of resistance, God bless you all and God bless America. Yep, and what you saw, the last thing was the very last picture, which seems super military, where all the members of that particular squad are standing over the body of the president of the United States whom they just executed. Hmm. Very Osama Bin Laden-like-ish. But yep, yeah, enough about that. So you've seen my trip to the movie theater, seen some previews, you've seen clips of the movie itself. Probably get, I don't know, I don't know if I get copyrighted on it for all that. It's all kind of spaced out funkily. So yeah, I don't know. I'll deal with that later. If they, if they give me a copyright strike, I could live with that for a little bit. Because I'm not, I haven't been live streaming in a while. But yes, so I went to go see the movie Civil War. And in my opinion, it was actually pretty good. It had a good pacing, uh, so generalities, had a good pacing about it. Um, my only two negative critiques about it, they really should have gotten the rights somehow to Guns N' Roses Civil War, like you heard in my intro. And I hate to say it, but whenever I see a helicopter scene, I mean, I just think of, like, forgot, um, it ain't me, it ain't me, I'm no senator's son. Yeah. 
that that old song. <laughs> Red, white, and blue. It ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't no senator's son. I forget the song of that. I forget the title now. Out there in YouTube land, tell me what the title of that song is. You know exactly which song I'm talking about. Now it's going to annoy me for a while. I'll, actually, wait a second. I have plenty of time to talk. Let's do some research if I can. It's not, it's not Senator. It's, is it Forgotten Son? I think so. Let me see here. Go to the good old interweb. Let this computer load up. I do have to write to that person before I go to the gym and get video clips started and delete them from my cell phone very promptly. But yeah, um, overall, while I'm loading this up, it was actually a, pr it was a, I thought a good movie. And I'm shocked because the theater was a lot more crowded for this movie than it was the goof, the action movies of Dune Part 2 and Ghostbusters The Frozen Empire. And that kind of shocked me, especially, I guess maybe it was the hour, because it was Wednesday, 7.30. That sounds like a nice midweek date movie. And there were a lot of couples there, and just a bunch of guys and, and some, some lonely women. Lonely women to find Hobo Tom. I'll go down on you. I know movie theater. I'm no senator's son. Let's see her. I know it's different. Than... Fortunate son. Ah. Let's see, her. yeah, that sounds about right. I knew it wasn't forgotten, sons. So yeah, Let's see her. video play scene. Eh, eh. Let's see, her. although that looks like a scene from some other movie. And let's see here. Yeah. Fortunate Son. That is another classic. Yeah, there we go. Blue. Me. It ain't me. I won't set the sun. Yeah, fortunate son. I knew it was something along those lines. But yes, let's, I digress. Let's go back to the movie as I decide to open up every program on my computer randomly. It was really good. It starts off in New York. So there's a water short shortage. And I like the way it kind of introduces this idea of what leads to a civil war where you have, again, the loss of, basic services although to be fair like New York City is never gonna run out of water yeah that's a teeny tiny bit far-fetched because he had the uh, military vehicles I think they called the water buffalo was there there to distribute water say hey, we need water uh, we have the the press there's a lot of press and this movie calls in more so than the thoughts of a civil war but another underlying theme i think is the role of the press in i guess war journalism so it starts off in new york uh there's water shortage people they start they start to the war riots uh water riots and some explode again there's a pushing shoving police say you can only push police so far before they put up their shields and just beat people with batons that's that's just human nature um, again with that you have the introduction of the main characters the one Kristen Durrance who got old really quick um, her handler the girl she picked up and of, and of course two for I mean I don't even know the actress name I just know him as two for Hawat. he was there as kind of the season old vet and again it's they glorify, they kind of glorify the role of the press photographer because after this, they all gather in a posh hotel that's undergoing power shortages, I guess because New York's under siege. That's, 
one of my critiques, because if the Florida Lions, Western Lions, and Texas were really laying siege to New York, that would be so messy. I mean, they've shown footages of European villages from World War II with house-to-house fighting. Literally, this would be like floor-to-floor fighting. And it, at least in my opinion, probably as uneducated as on the topic of urban warfare, it would be ugly. I mean, accounts from World War II saying, yeah, it was house-to-house fighting. If it was in New York City, it would be like literally apartment-to-apartment fighting. It would... It, it would probably very horrific a lot more so than they depict in this movie so I'm like yeah if there's water riots in New York that's not pretty but we get introduced and of course war correspondents are in some posh hotel drinking beer whiskey vodka smoking stuff they should not be smoking and yeah they all get together yep we're gonna go interview the, the main story is the one person who wants to interview the president and they get ready for their road trip and head on off in a Land Rover that just says press on it. Like that would give them pure immunity from stuff. And it does not, as you find out later in the movie. So they decide to take the long route because of, of where the armies are located. And I've gone up and down the Eastern seaboard. I was, I spent, I was born in Michigan, spent most of my life in New Jersey. Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Hampshire, uh, Florida, Maryland. I've driven up and down the eastern seaboard, and I recognize none of those roads. I'm like, well, that's not I-95. I'm like, why are they going this way? In one section, they're literally driving past. like, Like, they go through every suburban and country road heading west to go south to go east again. And I'm like, it's not 800 miles. I don't think it's 800 miles. From New York City to Washington. I might be wrong. Again, out there on YouTube land, check my geography. I don't think it's 800 miles. Because I know it's about 12... Can't be. Because it's 1,000, it's like 1,200 miles from Kalamazoo, the way I went, to Atlantic City. And that was Kalamazoo to Rochester to Trenton to Atlantic City. And that only took me literally a day to do. So 800 miles, I mean, from my house to Miami... Is about a four hour trip. I don't know about the math and timing. It really shouldn't have taken it really should not have taken them that long. Especially if there's no other cars in the road. You just go you just go seventy miles per hour and and, and you should be there quickly. But yeah. Math and geography aside, so they set on the road trip, um, they follow up with the Western Alliance taking on I guess parts of the US military. And I was kind of confused because I didn't know if they were with the Western Alliance or just a renegade force because they were literally dressed in Hawaiian shirts, um, camo pants, and everyone had everyone had an assault rifle too. Except for the two military guys and I guess the one sniper guy. Everyone carried an AR though, which makes me worried about stuff because this folks is definitely nowhere near an AR again always practice good gun safety and did I do it this time there we go always leave the safety on yeah um, so they travel the roundabout way they get caught by a sniper held up in like a country club house and the great line is the one person 
the one reporter guy, and I forget what his character's name was, uh, the main guy, uh, he, he's like, well, why are you shooting at them? And the army guy just looked at him and said, because they're shooting at us. Makes all the sense in the world. And even the um, young photojournalist said, like, when he's just, it's like, it's like, what's going on here? We're being shot at. Yep. Again, you don't have to be a brain surgeon to figure out stuff. So they get through that obstacle. They go to some camp in some stadium. X stadium. I don't even know what it would be. It was a junky looking stadium, whatever it was. Then they go to the typical redneck hillbilly place. Where I guess they just shot a bunch of people. We're going to dip, put them into a ditch. And got found out. And that's of course the line. What kind of American are you? I'm from Missouri. Missouri's American. Where are you from? Florida. Central American. How about you? Colorado. Definitely American. Where are you from? Hong Kong. That's China. Bang. That's the end of that. But yeah, um, you had your typical redneck hillbilly gun-toting country person with red glasses for whatever reason dumping bodies into a ditch from probably a stolen army truck uh, I'll get to that critique a little bit later and then they go to Charleston where there's again if you're going to lay siege to a major metropolitan city like Washington DC or New York I think you would just need more manpower I'm just thinking of the size and scope of the, some of these cities. And I'm like, yeah, like maybe some European city or European village. This is this is a U.S. of A. You're, I could just imagine if there was fighting here in Daytona Beach. It would literally be like driveway to driveway and street to street. It would be a freaking mess. And that would be a true civil war. Like that like that would not even be pretty to imagine. So they get there, they see uh, the Western Alliance, who I guess they're aligned with. Because uh, uh, Texas and the Western, Texas, California, the Western Alliance, and Florida wanted to succeed from the Union. Again, the president said, yes, we don't want you to succeed. Um, divided, united we stand, divided we, we fall, all of that. The Western Lions, they march on Washington, D.C. from Charleston. I forget exactly where Charleston is, but I'll tell you what, it was a lot quicker trip. It took them a lot quicker time to get from Charleston to Washington, D.C., traveling in an army convoy versus just open road travel, which, I don't know, doesn't... Again, I've traveled up and down the eastern seaboard, so yeah, and people are gonna say, "Well, boy, they want to stay away from the major roads and highways." Like, listen, that's the first place you want to go because the infrastructure in America is so tremendous. You don't have to take county road to get somewhere. You can just jump on the highway or at least a state road. You don't have to drive through the suburbs, and literally it looked like the suburbs because it said, "Welcome to Landing Estate." And so yeah. I mean, just looked like that very basic part of it. Uh, so they get to Washington, D.C. Again, uh, the one guy gets shot. Two for Hawat dies. He gets shot by the redneck. A um, bunch of other, yeah, the two other guys, the two other Asian people, I think, got shot. Because, again, not American. Uh, get to Washington, D.C. Have a tank. Again, well, I'll get to that at the very end. Because that's, that's my one major critique. Good movie. Um, so they get to Washington, D.C., decided to lay siege to the White House. The White House is, looks like Fortress America. I mean, there it looks like Troy was built up. Like, they used the model of the city of the 11 foot thick walls of Troy to surround the White House with. Uh, they destroyed the Lincoln Monument, which kind of was like, ugh. Again, they were held up in there. Helicopters come in. I heard I heard some helicopters today, and I kind of looked up. I'm like, hey, wait a second. 
or a low flying airplane. I'm like, whoa. But yeah. Uh, we go in, get to the White House. The beast leaves. That's a decoy. Most of the army gets fooled, except for the reporter knows that. Nah, he's still inside. So they go inside, find the find the chief of, uh, head of so secret service. Says we want to negotiate. There is no negotiations. Bang, she gets dropped again. They're they're taking pictures. Um, the younger female war want to be war correspondent who's taking the pictures. Like steps like right into the corridor. Bad move. Christine Dunst shoves her out of the way. She unfortunately dies at the very end. Um, they get the pictures, of course. And then, of course, they find the president, shoot the president. End of, I uh, get to take a picture with said dead president. End of movie. Um, now for my critiques. One, I want to know what happened to the majority of the Eastern military for the United States of America. Only because, again, from the East Coast, I have a certain bias. I know there's a whole bo bunch of forts or military bases along the Eastern seaboard. Unless they just defected to, to the uh, Western Alliance and never really told anyone about it. So they said, yeah, Washington's being held by some fanatics and Secret Service. And I'm like, there's not that many Secret Service. And that has to be a large number of fanatics. Um, then again, guys running around in Hawaiian shirts. I guess because they're in Hawaiian shirts, they're partially trained with ARs versus a trained military operation. I don't know. Some guy... Again, a red and white Hawaiian teacher kind of says, st stands out and says, hey, shoot me. Versus at least some kind of, even Flectron, I know they have different types of camouflage, but even if it's gray and black, it's still at least something in an urban setting. Again, I'm not entirely sure, but it has to be closer than a, a red Hawaiian t-shirt. Uh, then you have the redneck hillbilly who looks like one of the, the standard preppers, psycho preppers, yep. Uh, what, and again, just the siege of New York and Washington, I would imagine would be a lot longer and a lot messier than they depicted in the film. And the other thing that irked me is that they said Canadian money had greater value than American money. Boo Canada. That's not... <laughs> that's pure fiction, folks. That's not going to happen. Uh, the things I did like about the uh, the other my other pet peeve, uh, uh, they, they dropped the f bomb so often. I can see military people using it all all the time, but yeah, it is, it is what the this is all, and yeah, it continued on. Again. It, it, it seems more poignant when it's used less frequently. Like when you heard it in Ghostbusters, you're like, whoa. But in this movie, it's like, yeah, whatever. What's so civil about war anyway? The music was good. Again, they needed... The one... Oh, I know something. Oh, I forgot the song. Darn it. Whatever that song was. When the helicopters, when the Chinook helicopters came in. Like, yeah, that, that would have been awesome. Again, playing Guns N' Roses Civil War to start off would have been pretty cool. What we got here is a failure to communicate. That would have been perfect. Yeah. And the Forgotten song. Not Forgotten. I, no, I, I hate this. I keep on forgetting the name. And I know I have it on record, too. So, I won't give credit where credit's due. It ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't no son or son. What, uh, you know what? Whatever song that is. I don't feel like going back to it right now. 
Actually, since my computer finally decided to work. Yeah. So that, um, the good point, it wasn't over-the-top gratuitous violence, which is what I like. So I know some war films, especially some modern ones, it's way over the top. Like, I can stand people getting shot. That's, that's, that, you know that's going to happen. But when it's so over the top, and this movie was not over the top. That's what I like about this. This movie, to me, reminded me more so of an Apocalypse Now style movie where you're just kind of waiting um, no. And I'm going to kick myself. Fortunate son. Why do I th Yeah, fortunate son. I'm going to leave that like that. Fortunate son. Whenever they have the, the helicopters, they should just play fortunate son. Forever. Um, again, one of the things I did, the did, I did like about it is that... It had the apocalypse now. This is a serious movie feeling, which is a lot different from what other movies have been that I've seen and other movies out there. And we're not going to have gratuitous violence. It's a war movie. People are going to get shot. You're going to see blood. But it's not over-the-top violence. Uh, the other thing I did like is that every so often they would cut away and just show the pictures they would take while they were documenting this whole American Civil War. And I like that. It, it broke up the film, and it gave you a little bit more story behind it. It's like, hey, this is why they're doing this. Look at this image. You're like, whoa. Powerful images. Again, if you think about war correspondence, there are some powerful images. Again, the iconic one of the sailor kissing the woman in Times Square. Um, the execution of the one prisoner. In Vietnam I mean there's a whole series of very iconic war photographs that kind of stick and resonate and this movie did that so in two parts this movie said yeah this is what would happen during the American Civil War it skipped over a lot of how it got to that point and two like this is what war corresponds to over again uh, Christine Durrance again she's like you know what? I did this in other countries. Why didn't people see this as a warning? What could happen here? That made sense. Overall, I'll give this movie a surf and turf rating. And that was Civil War, folks. Because there ain't nothing civil about war. Yep. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you think about Civil War if you've seen it. Again, please like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you later for more wrestling-related news as I'll go back to my roots of my channel. But again, I like to throw, throw things in. And again, thank you so much. The 1.4K people have seen my most recent fishing video. There will be more fishing videos once I get a day off. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and remember... War is not civil.